scared me. That scared you? Why did that chair stop? Friction. Friction, right? So we all have experienced friction in our lives. Today you guys are going to learn how to calculate friction. Okay. So there are many different types of forces that occur in nature, but you are probably most familiar with the force of friction. It's a resistive force. What do you guys think that means, a resistive force? Yeah. Um, it like, it acts in the opposite direction of like the object's original force. Very good, it acts against the original object's motion. Not necessarily the force, because as we know, an object that's in motion, does it need a force to stay in motion? No, which law is that? Newton's first law, right? So any object that's in motion, it doesn't need a force to act against it, but if friction's working on it, what's going to happen to the object? It stops. It's going to slow down, and, hope, and maybe eventually it's going to stop, okay? So it's a resistive force. It opposes the motion of the object. So what does sandpaper have to do with friction? Well, sandpaper has a rough surface. Right, it has a rough texture. And the rougher the texture, what happens to the friction force? The more friction. The more friction, right? And I'm sure we've all experienced this. Like if you, if you uh, are in ice skating, do ice skate, what kind of shoes would you wear to go ice skating? Ice skates. Ice skates. And why would you choose to wear ice skates instead of, say, hiking boots? Exactly. The ice skates have less friction, they're a smoother surface than the hiking boots. The hiking boots are rougher and therefore have more friction. So the friction, um, there are a couple of different types of friction. There is friction between objects and air, which is often called air resistance. So air resistance is just another type of friction. And there's also friction between fluids, and friction between fluids has a special name. It's called viscosity, but these are all just types of friction. Where does the friction come from? Well, the friction comes from that idea of why you might wear ice skates instead of hiking boots if you want to be able to slip more. Because at the microscopic level, all surfaces are at least a little bit rough. And the rougher the surface, the more friction there is between them. We measure that roughness of a, for, of a surface by something called the coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction, okay, the symbol for it is mu k. I know that looks like an M, and it's a funny M. It's called a mu, Greek letter. And we put the subscript k to stand for kinetic friction. If you look at this equation up here, Friction is equal to mu k fm. Friction depends on the coefficient of friction. The rougher the surface, the more friction there's going to be. And it also depends on the normal force. Do you guys remember what the normal force is? Who can tell us what the normal force is? Yeah. Um, wouldn't it be equal to mg? OK, so normal force is usually equal to the weight. How do we get a normal force? It's just the force that pushes you up. Okay, it's an upward force, very good. Your normal force is always upward. The reason that it's equal to mg is your normal force is upward and your weight is downward. Anybody know what actually causes the force? Um, according to Newton's third law, um, a surface or an object pushes back the same amount of force that you push onto it. So normal force would be equal to the weight mg. Okay, so my feet are pushing on the floor and the floor is pushing up on me. So in order for me to have a normal force, I have to be on a surface, okay? So I have a normal force on my feet if I'm standing on the floor. If I sit down in this chair, what's putting a normal force on me? The chair. The chair, very good. If I were hanging from a rope, would I have a normal force? 
No, because there's no surface. I'm not on a surface, okay? So the normal force is the surface pushing up on you. And like you said, it's almost always equal to the weight. We're going to talk about situations a little bit later where the normal force and the weight are not equal, but it is almost always equal to the weight for the purposes of our class. This is a list of coefficients of friction. You'll notice that the slipperier the surface is, the lower its coefficient of kinetic friction. Right? They're proportional to one another. If your coefficient of friction goes up, your friction force will also go up. OK, let's try an example. A man accelerates a crate along a rough surface. We're going to draw the free body diagram for the surface. So can somebody name some forces for me that will be on the surface, or on the object? Yes. MG. MG. Anything else? Uh, applied force. Applied force. Anything else? Normal force. Normal force. Anything else? Friction. Friction force. Very good. That rough surface is a key that there is going to be a friction force, and it's going to look like that. Why is the force applied bigger than the force of friction? Because the crate is moving, and if the force of friction were bigger, then um, the box wouldn't be moving. It wouldn't be? It, it wouldn't be moving. Oh, Give her the special word that um, she's looking for. The box for. is accelerating. Because, not just because it's moving, but also because it's accelerating. Very good. OK. If we were to determine sigma f in the x direction, would we add these or subtract them? Um, we should subtract them because they're going in two different directions. You got it. Good job. Okay. Force applied minus the force of friction equals MA. And what about in the Y direction? Add them or subtract them? Well, they're equal. How do you know that they're equal? Because the box is staying on the surface and it's Going up or down. Very good. It is not accelerating up or down. So the normal force minus mg equals zero, also known as Fn equals mg. Right back to your point there. Very good.